based upon the Institute of Medicine, which said that THC might be a useful adjunct to uh, other analgesics. We said, well, good idea. Okay, we're going to see if, first of all, there is a synergy. And starting in 1992, before the Institute of Medicine, actually, we did show there was a synergy. We showed that, and you can read through this, I won't read it to you, that it does involve the release of endogenous opioid peptides. And so this diagram just indicates the fact that when THC releases these endogenous opioid peptides, those endogenous opioids go and they bind to their opioid receptor, then you put morphine on board to bind to the mu receptor and you've got the full system engaged. And so you've got a synergistic interaction. And so the first hypothesis I just want to show you is, is can we do this enhancement by an oral route? Our first studies were all done in a spinal route. Can we do it with an oral route? And again, that goes back to the fact that we wanted to use Marinol since it is a uh, Schedule III drug and it's, uh, it's available. And so uh, we first used acute pain models and we used mice and this is something called a tail flick machine. It's just a thermal stimulus. It's a little bit like touching a hot stove where you pull your finger away. It's, a, it's, it's very innocuous. And uh, we have measured uh, the dose response curves. Pharmacologists love dose response curves. And so we measured the dose response curve of morphine by itself and morphine in the combination of a low, inactive, totally analgesically inactive by itself dose of delta 9 THC. And here what you see is that uh, the dose of morphine is on the, the uh, x axis, and the y axis, the higher this goes, the higher the analgesia. So morphine by itself is a full analgesic, produces 100% analgesia, but you've got to use a dose of uh, almost 80 milligram per kilogram to 100 milligram per kilogram orally in mice to get that full 100% uh, effect. However, you can reduce that down by uh, more than fourfold by uh, injecting the delta 9 THC along with the morphine. And in fact, what we did was uh, we showed this Here's another uh, diagram showing the shift. Uh, it's the shift over to the left, meaning that morphine became more potent. Look at the shift with codeine. This is maybe hard to see, but um, we showed that this was a synergistic, meaning one plus one equals six interaction. It's not purely additive. It is a synergistic interaction between the drugs using something called an isobolographic analysis which is uh, what is necessary to prove synergy in a pharmacological way. We showed the same thing with codeine. But more importantly, we went through a whole list, a whole grocery list of opioids and have added to this list by now. And we found that um, here this uh, potency ratio, PR, indicates how much more potent morphine becomes when you have an inactive dose of THC with it meaning that you can get away with 2.2-fold less morphine. Uh, here, you can get away with 25.8-fold less codeine. And so it enhanced codeine 25-fold. Methadone, which we thought was very interesting for methadone clinics and for withdrawal in methadone clinics when there's always a problem with uh, not enough methadone being on board. Uh, oxymorphone, hydromorphone, LAM, meperidine, Demerol, uh, heroin. And I'll talk about fentanyl in just a minute. Um, so there were a wide variety of opioids that were enhanced. So we knew for sure we could synergize with morphine, we could synergize with codeine, but we wanted to know, we asked the question, okay, if, if you do set up this low-dose combination, so you've got it, uh, a very low dose of morphine, very low dose of delta-9 THC, and you're administering these for a long period of time, will you develop tolerance to this low-dose combination? Um, and the bottom line, uh, our question was, will this yield tolerance? Because, again, we don't want to give somebody a low-dose combination if they're going to get tolerant, because they get tolerant to the morphine already. So what we found, as we've only gone out to 14 days, is that no, we do not see tolerance, and we've published these studies. But what was more fascinating was Diana Sitchewitz said, can we prevent the development of tolerance? If we give a low dose of delta-9 THC, along with the morphine at a high dose, can we prevent the development of tolerance to morphine? And we did. And can we prevent the development of physical dependence to morphine? 
And yes, we did. And we've published those studies as well in Journal of Pharmacology and Experimental Therapeutics. So those uh, studies have been shown uh, that you can prevent the development of tolerance and the development of physical dependence to morphine by injecting the uh, Delta 9 THC along with the morphine. Okay, uh, then another interesting project came along. I had a nurse anesthetist working in the lab with me. And um, we asked the question, uh, if you give this low dose of Delta 9 THC, can you restore the efficacy of morphine? If you've got a patient that's punching their button all the time for the nurse and needs another dose of their Demerol or their morphine, et cetera, what if you went into that patient whose drug had worn off and you gave them Marinol instead? Would that work? So of course we did this in mice, preclinical studies. So here's a very high dose. This is uh, of morphine over a time course. And the time course is from 30 minutes to 360 minutes. And morphine started wearing off. So what we did, this is the same curve, we added in an inactive dose of Delta 9 THC, which would be equivalent to a 2.5 milligram Marinol tablet. And what we saw was that we completely restored the efficacy of morphine back to what it was when that person first took the morphine. And in fact, uh, then we asked the question, which is not on here, how many times can you do this? How many bumps, as we like to call it, how many restorations can you go through? And what we found thus far is you can go through six hours of restorations. So that means that you can prolong the duration of, of the action of morphine by about six hours by doing this with the um, Marinol. The same thing was true with codeine. Uh, codeine was active for 120 minutes, and when we uh, used the low dose, inactive dose of Delta 9 THC, again, we found the, the um, interaction. And this is because it does not take very much of the opioid to be there for that synergy to happen. So as long as there's any opioid in the brain, as long as there's any uh, codeine in the brain, you're going to have the synergy with Delta 9 THC. So uh, why does this happen? Since this hypothesis proved to be true, uh, we went in and we've done some studies now looking at the receptors. And again, it comes back to the same thing, that when you have the THC on board, it's releasing endogenous opioids. And no matter how low the level that, of the opioid that's binding to the mu receptor, as long as there's something there, uh, you will get a synergistic interaction. The control of uh, analgesia and hyperalgesia and chronic pain is really a puzzle to everybody. And clearly the cannabinoids are one of the key players. They're the cornerstones. Uh, if I, I didn't have time to go over how they're modulating in arthritis, the release of the endogenous opioids, but they clearly play a role in maintaining homeostasis along with the opioid system. So these two are interconnected. Now, two systems that I didn't get to talk about are the NMDA system, which we have looked at with glutamate. There's been some talk about that today already, which we have just started doing a lot of studies on. And another very interesting uh, system, which we have actually um, published abstract forms on, but we haven't actually gotten the papers out yet, and this is the muscarinic cholinergic system. The reason we're very interested in this is that chronic exposure to cholinesterase agents leads to chronic pain stage such as uh, are seen in Gulf War syndrome. And so we are very interested in the fact that the uh, muscarinic cholinergic system appears to be one of the puzzles as well, playing a role with all of these other systems in the modulation of analgesia, hyperalgesia, and chronic pain, and uh, may provide for alternatives to therapies for the, the treatment of these various uh, disease states. So with that, I would like to thank everybody, thank NIDA, for the funding that I have received for many, many years. And uh, if you have questions, since I will not be here tomorrow, and um, I have this helmet on because I will not be here tomorrow for the question and answer period, please feel free to contact me with any questions directly. Thank you very much.